My name is Stephen King. Spend some time in the dark. Please don't let us be in the dark. Help me. I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. And that's a promise. Welcome to Castle Rock Radio. I am Max Booth. And I am Lori Michelle. And this is the Stephen King Podcast. Woohoo! Uh, the podcast where we talk about Stephen King, things he's written, movies made off of his movies. That's not right. <laughs> movies made off of his books, um, plays he's written. He's written plays? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, he's written screenplays. Well, that's true. Yeah. Not the same thing at all. No. He's written poems. How will we do a podcast about that? I don't know. Line by line? He is not a good poet. I don't know. I've never read any of his poetry. He had one called Full Owen. Well, it that's was, sweet. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, today on the show, we'll talk about a movie. A movie that just came out recently yes. on Netflix. Yes, it's Gerald's Game. By Mike Flanagan. Yes. Who made movies such as Oculus and Hush. That is correct. Joining us today will be Betty Rocksteady, author of Like Jagged Teeth. Yes, which we published through All Small Press. We Pulled did. Patrick Motion Machine Publishing. Mm-hmm. Go buy it. Right like now. Like Jagged Teeth. Bye, right now. Betty Rock Steady. <laughs> Until then, let's listen to this podcast about Gerald's Game, and then, the movie. And then stay tuned afterwards when we talk about news. <laughs> This is going to be good for us, Jess. Really good. That's a marriage, isn't it? Working on the difficult things. For better or worse. Let's go in. Get comfy. I bet you think your husband will be back any minute. Try to go for him. There's no one for miles. Gerald? I'm sorry, baby. You don't get to know my name. I don't like this. I'm serious. Stop. I don't like that. I... Stop it! Are you playing? Is this really what it takes these days? I don't know. We were so wrong. We were happy once. Where were we? Gerald? What? What's oh. happening? Oh. Gerald! <laughs> what have you been up to? Oh, uh, nothing. I was just watching some short films. We saw some last night, some of those racist cartoons. I love racist cartoons. Which they, ones are you watching? They will play no them idea. before the movie, the Blade Runner movie, because we went to the cool movie theater. That's so cool. The one they played was about this dog cat looking thing who created a robot to mow the front yard. I think I know that one. Was it Bimbo? I, I, have no I idea. don't know the names. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what animal animal. Yeah, it was. I'm not sure if it was a dog or a cat either. <laughs> um, like full ahead, they took a pumpkin and impaled it on top of the right of a pot belly stove. Yeah, with some pipes. Okay, no, that is not the cat dog animal robot building one I was thinking of. <laughs> There's many of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a popular concept, I guess. Well, you know, the 50s. Was, was that the only one they showed? It was pretty There was long. another one that was going on when we first walked in, but I wasn't really paying attention. Mm-hmm. Except for the fact that I said, hey, Betty would like these cartoons. <laughs> I, I swear to God yeah. I said that. <laughs> Excellent. Everyone should think of me when they see those. Anytime we see something racist, we think, oh, yeah, Betty would love this. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even racist cartoons. They just, well, some of them are. Some of yeah, them are. Yeah, a lot but... of them are. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, at one point, the robot, like, put on a white hood and began chasing oh, this black not. guy around. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Yeah. <laughs> don't think so. Okay, so I guess we should talk about this movie. We yeah. should, what since that's why are we, we are talking here. About? We are talking about Gerald's Game. Oh, I, I watched the wrong movie. <laughs> what movie did you watch? I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Tom's Game. <laughs> I don't think Tom has game. Yeah, he, he just like... had... 
a video game. Oh. He was playing Cuphead. <laughs> I don't know what Cuphead <laughs> is. <laughs> I don't think I want to know what Cuphead is. Oh no, it's just a uh, it's a game that's done in the style of those old cartoons that I'm obsessing over right now. What did you think Cuphead was? I'm not sure, Please. and I'm not sure I really want to know. Okay. Girls want Cuphead. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, should we begin this podcast? Uh, you think? Uh, that's why I'm asking you. We could still talk about Cuphead. <laughs> I think we're done with Cuphead now. <clears throat> okay, well, let's <laughs> do like five seconds of silence. I'm going to start singing if we say too much longer. Why? The sounds of silence. (laughs) That's not what I said. (laughs) My favorite thing is to record the dog looking at things sadly while playing the sound of silence. Beautiful. Like if we have a cookie just out of reach, he'll be looking at it sadly. (laughs) So Max will play that song. (laughs) Hello, darkness, my old friend. (laughs) That dog's going to eat us. Speaking of dogs eating us, (laughs) today we'll talk about uh, Gerald's Game. Gerald's Game, joined by, uh, what's her name? Oh, what's her name? name Good old Betty Rocksteady. Also of like jagged teeth and fetus deletus. (laughs) The upcoming fetus deletus. Very exciting. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a fake name we can also now say that betty is going to be in dark moon digest issue 29 that'll be coming out this month yeah, yeah. she wrote something about a cat surprisingly Surprise. I, I was shocked <laughs> he's like which one did she write i'm like the one about the cat he's like i should have known <laughs> okay so obviously this movie just came to netflix not too long ago and Correct. We're talking about it because it's based off a Stephen King novel, Hooray. which was written in 1992, I think. Somewhere around there. 97 for some reason. I might have uh, it was in the 90s. I don't, I'm not sure of the exact date. We'll find out here in a second. We will. Did you we guys will. read that book? No, have you? I did, but like a long time ago, so it's like... Part 1992. Of me is, you were right. It was 1992. Mm, damn. He was right. You should never doubt his Stephen King knowledge. <laughs> I don't know. I'm usually pretty good. I know you are pretty good. Now we're well, kicking you off the show. <laughs> <laughs> so you you read it? You said I did. I read it back. I don't know. It's been about four or five years ago. Back in 1992. It when... No, it wasn't in 92. I read it when I was a teenager, and it disturbed the shit out of me. It was one of my favorite. I think it was one of the first Stephen King I read, like within the first five or ten, and it really creeped me out. It was. It was one of my favorites for a long time. Well, when they first announced that they were going to make it a movie, I thought. How in the hell are gonna gonna do that? Because it takes place all in her mind. I mean, it seems like an impossible movie to make. Yeah. So but it's anyway, not. it was not because obviously. We just watched it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was made by Mike Flanagan, who's Correct. made some okay movies and some bad movies. I really liked Oculus, Oculus by him. Was I right. thought that was cool. I and didn't the... hate that one. There's a short film Oculus was based on called Oculus something, The Man with the Plan, and that was excellent. It was super good. Hmm. Um, Absentia was good, too. Did I you haven't seen that. No. I haven't seen that one. I either. liked that one a lot. Um, he made Hush, with, which I thought was just terrible. I hated it. Well, I uh, your main was... thing with that is you thought everything should be quiet because I, she was I deaf. I just didn't so... like most of it. Yeah. I thought it was like an average home invasion movie. Like, it wasn't breaking any really new ground even with the addition of her being deaf it just didn't really add a lot to it i think the hype made me hate it because i went in thinking okay you guys better not be letting me down and And they let you down didn't they i was reading up on it and i guess he had originally wanted to make it completely silent which i think would have been cool that would have been cool but the producer also like no 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 one's gonna watch this yeah probably most teenagers wouldn't understand why since I mean, I'm saying it was built for like the teenage audience, you know. They might yeah. have. I think I think they know people deaf. I I know that, but they make you know... a wristband, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do they? <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> deaf or realness. Uh, but he also made Ouija or of an origin of e- evil. I cannot speak today. Yeah, the sequel to Ouija. Right. I didn't see that. Neither mm-hmm. have I. 
But what's I, most exciting to me is he's going to be doing the adaptation of Shirley Jackson's The House, The Haunting of Hill House, and he's going to make it into a series. So all that's kind of exciting. Hopefully, it'll be done. I love well. that book. I know that I shouldn't say that because everybody loved that book, but I just didn't love it. I can say I've never read it. Well, I've also have never read The Haunting of Hill House. Har har. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're so hysterical. <laughs> That's the second reading of it joke today he's made. So day's not done yet. <laughs> the day's not done yet. And every time there's a big moment of silence, and then you get it, and I'm just sitting next to you, smiling. Yeah, <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Lord, it you get it. Har har. Uh. You are so hysterical. <laughs> Have you read The Haunting of Hill House? It, if I have, I don't think I've ever read the whole thing. What, is it a haunted house book? I, I don't remember. And sense. if I did, I was probably in high school. Is it about a haunted house on top of a hill? I'm probably. I, I don't it's remember. A, it's sim- a similar concept to Hell House. Which Did you ever end up reading that, Max? Some of it. What? Some of it. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe we should kick him off. <laughs> I am fine with that. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I am, f- I am fine with it. Uh, shut up. <laughs> no more it jokes. Okay. This is not about it. I just don't think you get it. I- I've gotten it. All right. All right. <laughs> um, he's, he also made a movie called Before I Wake, which I think was only released in Canada. Oh, I have seen it, so it definitely was here. I, I mean, I stole it on the internet, as I do, because I'm a piece of shit. But, oh, busted. Yeah, <laughs> Crazy. Um, it was okay. I, he's, like, inconsistent, I guess. I really like some of his movies. The other ones, I'm like, eh. Yeah. It was just, like, it was a horror movie. It was definitely a, a regular horror movie. Hmm. Well, okay. Maybe one day we'll... I'm not going to say see it, because we've already seen it. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it in previous episodes. Shut up. <laughs> um, but most exciting, I think, is he just made Drilled's Game. Yes. A movie he's, he spoke about in interviews as being his dream project. He, nice. If he had any choice in making a movie, he'd always want to make this one. That's surprising. I, I mean, I read the book, and I didn't think, oh, this would make a great movie. You know no, how I, some books you read, and you're like, that obvious, would be a fabulous movie. Obviously, he had a, this vision obviously. of these ghost folks just hanging around, talking to him. I mean, I love a movie of one or two people stuck in a really shitty situation that there seems to be no hope of getting out of, and it's like a limited set like that. I don't know. That's my thing. I like it. Yeah, have you seen this movie called The Hole? I've never heard of that movie. Oh, it, is that the one by the guy who did, like, Gremlins or something? No, no, you'll think of Joe Dante. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a different hole. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. this movie, <laughs> it, it takes place in a bunk hole. You would love it. Give it a try. Yeah. Yeah, it's in uh, 3D, I believe. I'm sure I can pull it up on Netflix and just watch the first one called The Hole that I find, and that'll be it, right? I don't see how you could go wrong. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Typing something like that in, you know. <laughs> um, so this just came out the month of October. Yes. Did he also write it? Yes, he co-wrote he it co-wrote with um, it. some dude named Jeff. Jeff. Jeff Howard, whoever the heck that is. I don't know. I don't know either. Stephen King's god grandson. Is that who it is? Do you know Stephen King's grandson has a Twiddle account? He's not no. old enough for a Twitter account, is he really? Yes. <laughs> you know, I guess that makes sense. Why wouldn't he be old enough? His son's older than you are. Oh, great. Right, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I guess I was thinking about it. I mean, he's the same age as my parents. Yeah, he just turned 70. Yeah. And so, I mean, their grandchild is old enough to have a Twitter account, so I why know. not? One night, I found myself myself on Stephen King's grandson's Twitter account, and I was just <laughs> looking at the things he's posted, and I thought, is this creepy? Probably. This is going too far. Hey. <laughs> I don't know. Something King. Something King. Well, it really is something, right? Go, go to Stephen King's Twiddle account and look at who he follows. He only follows like 60 people and one of them is his kid. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Max is going to jail. <laughs> he follows 66 people. Oh. Just saying. One of them is Peter Straub. I think one of them was like a John Cusack fan club. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I could be making that up, though. Ethan King, that must be him. Yeah. I guess I'll follow him. Oh, Snopes.com. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Schismer. <laughs> oh, we love that guy. He yeah. is the greatest co-writer. Um, I'm sure there, Richard Kismar just loves us, too. He has to. <laughs> I'm sure he's sort of aware that, yeah. I'm sure so, because Max was supposed to do an interview with him, and then after the podcast came out, he just ignored Max altogether. <laughs> <laughs> it was after I posted the review. Oh, that was DMD. the review, the DMD review. <laughs> it didn't help that someone else posted the review and tagged him in it. Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. Here, this guy really hates your book. Go read the review. <laughs> okay, so this movie, who's in it? I don't know. Bruce Greenwood and Carla Gugino. I don't recognize either of them. I didn't recognize either of them either. They've probably been in movies. Well, Bruce Greenwood has been in other stuff because his name sounds a little bit familiar and he looked oh, a little yeah. bit familiar. Steve recognized him because he was in like Star Trek or something. I don't uh-huh. know. Uh-huh. Didn't you look it up and say he was in Mad Men? Yeah, he was yeah. in Mad Men. I don't, know. I don't know which one he played in Mad Men, but you know. He played Captain Christopher Pike in the Star Trek reboot. Uh-huh. Christopher Pike is an excellent captain name. Yeah, I love his books. <laughs> Whenever he was done with missions, he would go home and write Y.A. Hull novels. Of course. That's how he spent the time from planet to planet. You have to unwind somehow. Is that how it works? Otherwise, yeah. you have a health attack. Whoa. Whoa. While standing above your handcuffed wife. <laughs> Good lord. And uh, the girl was in uh, Watchmen. Who did she I play guess? in the Watchmen? Does it oh, say? Oh, wait, is this? Um, yeah, Jupiter. Sally Jupiter. I don't have no so, idea. I think that was um, the original girlfriend of... No. Oh, she's the mom of Lori, the Silk Spectre. Ah. So she was like... Whatever. Like anyway. a minor character. Well, what are we talking yeah. about? The girl that played Jesse. No. What movie are we Watchmen. talking about? Watchmen. Oh. Oh, okay. Watchmen. <laughs> I, I was last. He took a brief vacation there for a second. He was thinking about Christopher Pike. <laughs> yeah. She was. <laughs> <laughs> and she's in Sin City. Huh. Yeah, she was. She was the loyal, right? The lesbian loyal? Mm-mm. Who gets trapped in the basement of Eli Elijah Woods's Headquarters. Oh, yeah, maybe she was. Hmm. Elijah Wood was weird in that. He's weird. I love him. He yeah. does play weird characters, though. I mean... He was great in that Netflix movie. It has a long yes, title. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't... I don't um, feel at home, home in this world anymore or something, something like that. Something like that. Did you say Demi Oh, I never Lowe? watched no. that. Oh, you should. You, you should. Love you would love that movie. That was yeah? a good movie. Yeah. Okay, right. well, we will wait. <laughs> Go watch. <laughs> watch it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, I guess we. So should get Gerald into it. and Jesse Burlingame, who are the two main characters. Is of this that movie. the last name? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, Joel Burlingame's game. Yes. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? I, I would assume so. How else would you pronounce that? His name has game in it. I know. I see that. Okay. I... <laughs> do you want me to call Stephen King and go, oh, why yes. the fuck yeah, do you know? Name. Yes. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> well, they never say his, lo- they don't say their last name in the movie. I don't know. I don't think so. That's amazing. Anyway, they're driving out to some lake house. Um, yeah, they'll, um, they'll driving and on the radio, immediately we get some obvious foreshadowing of... Some graves that have been being dug up by a crazy right. man. Correct. Well, they don't say it's a crazy man. They just no, they say... just say some graves have been robbed, basically. <laughs> yeah, they're just talking about this ongoing grave robbing scheme that's been hitting the local area. <laughs> <laughs> and they just kind of flick it off, like, I don't want to listen to this. I want to look at the woods as I drive. Well, this is beautiful. Their house is beautiful. The lake is beautiful. I don't know. I mean, if some grave robbing stuff was going on the yeah, radio. Yeah, but you and I are kind of weird, and we like to listen to stuff like that. So Even if I wasn't, I would be like, we should probably know about what's going on. Yeah, but they're like a long way away from that. So, I mean, if and you heard about something scary, about... Was... So they're not really in danger. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they're not dead yet, so... That's true. <laughs> 
so they they're going to this lake house because they're trying to quote unquote rekindle their marriage. You know, they're having some sort of secret sex giveaway. Giveaway. Get, get, away. <laughs> <laughs> get away. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look under your seats. You get one. You get one. <laughs> we all get one. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you guys this sex, will go on the greatest bloopers of all times <laughs> what else goes on it i don't know hey i'm sure we've got what some. else goes on it <laughs> jesus christ there. now we agreed you were done with it i agreed to nothing um <laughs> so they're driving talking about how beautiful everything is and they see this dog just chowing down a dead animal of some kind it's an opossum an opossum. It was an opossum. And Jesse's kind of like, oh, I want to help it. And Gerald's like, yeah, right. He's like, we got to get like, rid of these strays. He's dick about it. Yeah. He's really intense on leaving. He wants to have sex. Yeah. and like We the... are not helping a suffering <laughs> animal. I need to bone. The dog didn't <laughs> seem that suffering. I mean, he had a mule. Well, and the thing is, is she said, I think it has a tag on it, so oh, it's yeah, not yeah. a stray. So... And he's like, we're not helping him. Hmm? He, he acted like he acted like she had previously taken home strays. He was like, not again. Oh, I, I know, I I know, know. what your plan is. We'll not keep in this dog that's going to eat me. <laughs> Quit giving away the plots. Don't jump ahead, Max. Don't jump ahead. I'll jump as many heads as I want. <laughs> So they get to the house, and she notices that the fridge has been stocked. He's like, yes, I stocked it all for all weekend long. What was in the fridge? Because I'm know. trying to think, and all was... I see is eggnog, but that's not right. <laughs> no, it? no, I don't think there was any eggnog did in there just, at all. <laughs> did we just watch something with a bunch of eggnog? Yes, we did. It was The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is not The Simpsons. No. <laughs> but so she takes some meat out of the fridge, and she cuts it up to give to the dog. And he goes, that was Kobe beef, all the way from Kobe. <laughs> It's like, and it's worth a bunch of money. Will yes. is Kobe. Is Kobe a place? Yeah, in Japan, I think. Okay. I don't know. I don't know either. But it was like two hundred dollars a pound for this beef, and I think who the fuck would spend two hundred dollars a pound on beef? I mean, I would also kind of get mad. She just gave it to this dog. He just spent how much money on Kobe beef? <laughs> I probably wouldn't buy Kobe beef though. No. We'd be buying the, you know, $1.99 a pound stuff at H-E-B, so. <laughs> no one knows what H-E-B is. It's a grocery store. Yeah, local to San Antonio only. Well, that's okay. <laughs> then people in San Antonio will know what we're talking what about. What does um, H-E-B stand for again? <laughs> Somebody, it's like Harold's, Harold E. Butts. Yeah. <laughs> the last name is Butts. <laughs> B-U-T-T. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So funny. It is, it is kind of hysterical. Yeah. Okay, so she gives him beef. She gives him the beef. The dog is like, hey, thanks. And they, <laughs> he's like, I just took a Viagra. We have to go inside. We're right now. <laughs> this is a ticking time bomb. <laughs> so he drags her in, and it emphasizes they leave the front door wide open. Right. Which is kind of stupid, because even if there was nobody around, wouldn't you shut your front door? What about bugs? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how you get a lot of bugs. Flies. Exactly. Flies everywhere. Fucking Jill doesn't know anything. Maybe he's like bored at a bar. He doesn't shut doors. What? <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Maybe it was uh, one of his kinks. Oh, his kinks. I thought you said skinks. So she changes into this beautiful <laughs> nightgown thing. It's kind of a sexy nightgown. I found it very long for a sexy it, nightgown. It was. it was like past her knees. It was, it was. but it was it was nice and lovely. It wasn't sexy by you know sexy imagination, but it was pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. I feel like if it wasn't long, we would have had a lot of uncomfortable angles as she was Yeah, that probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably true. So he takes another Viagra as she's laying there, and he comes out and he sets his glass of water on the shelf above her head. Has he taken two at this point? He has taken two at this point. How many I'll, is usually That's normal? probably why he had a heart attack. Probably oh, so. Sorry. No, uh, no, that's okay. Oh, he dies? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, I, probably so, because, you know, you're not supposed to take more than one, I don't think. I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. I mean, I obviously who, who, don't take who, Viagra, who but... Who knows? Somebody who takes Viagra. Oh, man. I'll Google it. <laughs> Her Google's probably faster than the Google on this old computer. How many Viagra do you... <laughs> You're only 
supposed to maximum dosing frequency is once per day, but there oh are God. different milligram doses. Right. Between twenty five and hundred, so maybe he took two twenty fives. Yeah, I don't know because they never know. really showed the bottles. But you, just said Viagra. But I imagine it like increases the blood pressure, right? Right. Well, and they say that you're not allowed to take Viagra if you have any sort of heart problems. I do know that because it takes all the blood away from the rest of your body to put it into that area. Yeah, I mean, that's what I said when we were watching it. As soon as he took it, I was like, "That's probably why he has a health attack." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, asshole. Dumb man. So he handcuffs her to the bed with these, like, industrial strength <laughs> handcuffs. Like, real handcuffs. They're, like, really, really strong handcuffs. Where did he get these from? I don't know. I, don't, I think I don't in know. the book he had, like, a friend who was in the police or something. Mm. Like, there was a reason, and he explained it to her, and he was, like, being super dorky about how excited he was about them or something. The sounds of... I don't remember. Because I was imagining like him going to a place and having to question the front desk clerk. Like, now, will a woman be able to break through this? <laughs> if, if I title to a bed. Just for say, for instance, if I was to title to a bed. <laughs> That'd be like a Walmart at night question. Yeah. <laughs> they don't sell handcuffs, do they? I don't know. I don't know. They- Every time I hear about restraints, I think of that time that person asked you where the rope and the something else yeah. was. It was some weird something or other. Yeah. At the hotel? No. no. <laughs> he, he used to work overnight at Walmart. How <laughs> you keep your rope? <laughs> they came up to me. It was like 2 a.m. They had a big trench coat on. It's July. And he's like, will you keep the rope at? <laughs> Next. So I directed him to the rope, and he went on his way. Next, he was going to ask where they keep the chloroform and rags. <laughs> Why would they ask that? Why wouldn't they? I don't know. Where do you keep the rope and the Viagra? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a copy of Stephen King's Drillard's Game? <laughs> Unrelated. So he handcuffs her to the bed and he tells her to scream and they he start he wants to be like really rough like he's raping her almost kind yeah, of thing yeah. and of course so it makes her fantasy. yeah it makes her uncomfortable she's like I can't do this he, yeah she's it like, goes way past kinky yeah kinky, like rape <laughs> definitely <sighs> Yeah. What does she have in mind coming into this house that was going to happen? Well, she knew that they were going to have some sort of like fun, but okay. like I mean, it went past. It went past the point of being fun. It went past the point of being sexy. It just got to the point of being. I just don't know, like if, in, to the, everyone. in the book, if they discussed the no, planning out. No, at all. in the book, yeah, um, they had I don't previously remember. done it with like silk ties right. around her wrist. Wasn't it something and, like, that they did like almost every month? They went out and did this. Was uh, it seems like it occurred with some sort of frequency? What, what, wasn't it? It's been a long um, time since I read the book. In the I book, remember. I remember that they had done it, but it had been like not. It was at home, and it was not as like rapey. It was more right. like for her, like, oh, let's make it a little kinky, and I'll just bind your wrist with this silk scarf or whatever. And now he's taken to the point of, no, I want to handcuff you so you can't move, and I'm gonna rape the shit out of you. Yeah. And you have to act like you hate it and you're scared. <laughs> so, you know, that is a different level. Yeah, and then it's gone past the point where it's like, okay, I'm like, okay, what the fuck is their safe word? <laughs> yeah, I really did you not have a safe word. Yeah, and he's <laughs> like, are you teasing? Hissy. Yeah, and then he gets mad and she's like, take these off of me. And he refuses. He's like, what if I don't? How about let's just have a fight while you're handcuffed yeah, instead? Exactly. Because I'm a jerk. Because I'm an asshole and I can. Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> <laughs> of course then of course because they're arguing and his blood pressure has gotten all high he has a heart attack right then and there now in the book he if i recall correctly he's actually like raping her and she knees him in the junk and that's right. what gives him a heart right. attack right and that's what i told max yeah, i said, said she gets like you no know, get off me and kicks him and she so then isn't it always in her mind in the book well i killed him Yes, yeah. That's what I thought. And yeah. didn't you say he hits his head on something I think as he, he hits his head as he falls, too. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, so anyway, in this one, he has the heart attack more than likely from taking too much damn Viagra. And probably and from the, sh- the shock and being stressed. of being bit on the tongue. Yeah, and she bites him on the lip as okay. he goes to kiss her. Yeah. So just the whole entire thing, and he falls right down on top of her dead. And um, then... It's also cool seeing how she picks him up with her foot, and he's right. just looking lifelessly at her. Yes. <laughs> that was great. 
And so then he lands on the floor, and all of a sudden there's a pool of blood around his head. So I'm guessing he just bashes the back of his skull. I'm in sure. On the ground. I'm sure so. <clears throat> yep. And then she freaks out for a while. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of just panicking and screaming. And she to screams, help. "Gerald, stand up! Stand up! I'm sorry. Just stand up." What does she expect, though? Yeah, having a husband with such a dumb name. <laughs> Good point. What a stupid name of a bug. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just not a good name. It should have been called like Dave's game. Yeah, it's good. Or Max's game. Yeah. That would be cool. My game would just be saying it at <laughs> annoying times. <laughs> I, I still can't get over the last name has the old game in it. That is. How is that not? The focus point of every listicle I online. Don't Why don't you so make it one, Max? I will have to. Max is a master of listicles. I, um, I have noticed. Especially Stephen King ones. <laughs> those are the only ones I know how to write. And Stephen King listicles? Yeah. Okay, so he's dead. She's freaking out. And then the dog be- walks in. Correct. It, um, yeah, walks. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right build to a dog walking, but I think it's just, just walk. walk. The it's dog just walk. Just, it, like, it just walked in. It kind of trotted in. It, it makes sense. Yeah. They clicked in. Yeah, it clicked in. That's not it. <laughs> no. <laughs> they make that clicking noise. Though. And she's like, uh, did you enjoy that Kobe beef, you dog? The dog. <laughs> the dog doesn't respond because it's a dog. Right. It's a dog. <laughs> you really expect to go, hey, how are you doing up there, Jesse? <laughs> oh, I was really appreciative for that. Meat. Thank you, lady. Yeah. Would you like me to call the police? <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you in any way? <laughs> he calls oh, the cops and, and then ends. the was over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just they just don't tell you immediately that this movie takes place in the universe where dogs talk and have opposable thumbs. <laughs> hey, it and works. they enjoy fine beef. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> it's also <awesome>. false <laughs> this is true <laughs> so the dog begins like closing in on the dead husband and takes a chunk of meat from his hand right you know. his arm yeah and she's like what don't eat my husband right. i'm going to no bad dog bad dog i'm going to <laughs> <laughs> saving that <laughs> i was gonna use it later <laughs> and out and she panics again um she throws something at him i think the book yeah. there's a book and what was what was the book called i don't know it would have been funny if it were like it a copy of it or should something should have been like a, a copy of what it what <laughs> shut up <laughs> it should have been like a bachman book <laughs> that would have been funny yeah. <laughs> odd thomas <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah if i had made it <laughs> who was the guy the pseudonym in the del calf something oh, stark. george stark <laughs> yeah it should have been one of his a george nice. stark novel yeah. betty's favorite book <laughs> she doesn't like that one okay for some reason everyone i know has like three or four copies of that book that's crazy. We have one. Now that Steve and I moved in together, we have like eight of it. It's just everywhere. I don't what about like the dog half? <laughs> Shut up, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to live with this. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, the dog doesn't go away. It kind of just hangs out in the entrance. Right. Chowing down on a piece of meat, it has successfully ripped away. Right. And she does she black out and come to and no, just all of a sudden her husband stands up. Yeah. You had to feed that damn dog, didn't you? Right. <laughs> and he starts talking to her about everything that she's done wrong. And she looks down and realizes he's still on the ground, and oh my, it's a ghost or a hallucination. Right. And then but... she just kind of accepts the hallucination. Right. What well, I mean? How? What else? What, what else is she going to do? Yeah. I but don't I, believe you're real. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I mean, it tells her everything ever she's done wrong. You stupid bitch! You just laid here for five hours screaming for me to stand up. <laughs> what wasting good is that? Your time. Yeah, wasting your time. What do you think that's gonna do? He so isn't I'm, exactly awful a solution. No, he's just a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have been, you know, doing something. Yeah, it's like, what is she supposed to do? She, you handcuffed her to the bed, you dumb asshole. She may as well freak out. If you can't freak out, then. Right. No, wait, wait until something else happens, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
I, I, I zoned out. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Max? <laughs> well, I have Halloween decorations. Halloween decorations don't make you zone. It's hot outside. It's not that hot outside. And I have one side. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> I, I suggested before we do this episode that we each handcuff each other to the bed. Yeah. But then, I, but then I thought, who's gonna hit record? <laughs> mm, good point. I'm actually handcuffed to the bed right now. Oh well, that's good. At least somebody is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that would have proved. It would have proved nothing. And I know I I recently interviewed Odin King, and I asked him to tell us to tell the website about the time when he was a kid and Stephen King hang, um, tied him to the bed. And asked him to try to break free when he was writing this book. And uh, Owen King said that that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I looked it up and I found the interview and it turns out it was Joe he did that to. Now, it's so strange for you to get two things mixed up like that, Max. That's not It was uncommon, that... yes. It was, yeah. I was surprised to hear you had made that mistake because usually you check things out pretty thoroughly. <sighs> Everyone makes a mistake. <laughs> And this time it was his. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about this movie, right? <laughs> um, what's going on now? She's still just hallucinating. She's hallucinating him, and he's telling her everything ever she's done wrong, and you've done this wrong, and you've yeah. done that wrong. So it's like the self-doubt of her that's coming out. And, and... he's like, there's no way you're going to break free. And she's like, yes, it is. Watch mm. this. And mm. she immediately takes her hand out of the cuff and, <laughs> and breaks the bed, and she's like stopping till the entrance, the exit, going, ha, ha, I did right. it. And she looks back, and she's still tied to the bed, and now we have two hallucinations in the room right because now her strong woman has come out and become a hallucination yeah going, it's like good angel bad angel on the show right ones. once her self-doubt and once her strong persona mm-hmm. and the strong persona is yelling at her you're stronger than this don't listen to him he's an asshole <laughs> which is what would your um two hallucinations look like i don't know what about you betty I also actually, um, Gerald Burlingame would be one of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I would have that dog, maybe. Hmm. Mine would probably both be my cat, Stevie King. That makes sense. Like, one of them would just be knocking the glass of water off the top (laughs) of the thing, and the other one would be, I don't know, licking my toe and being annoying. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I uh, I mean a lot of this movie is just them talking. Right. There's a the lot whole of movie is basically basically the two hallucinations talking to Jess is that her name? Yeah, Jesse. Jesse. And then her memories of childhood as well. Right. Right, yeah. Um should we get into the memories, I guess? We I mean, can. What what happens to be filled She that? gets Anything? the glass of water off the oh. top of the shelf, which is kind of a monumental thing. Yeah. Because she's been tied up there for... Has been overnight yet? Yeah. Mm. It's been a good little while. It's she's been a kinda while, yeah. dehydrated from shock and stress and freaking out. So her strong version of herself helps her figure out how to get the glass of water and make a straw. Right. Yeah, uh, with a receipt, it. she... Um, got full something it was the tag from the dress that she had put on oh yeah she rolls it up right into a straw and the whole reason she remembers the drink is even above the headrest is the the fake jack is jess it's like the great the best thing he ever did was take that viagra, viagra right <laughs> and then we get a flashback of him taking the viagra and setting the glass above it all Exactly. So she does some MacGyver stuff, and she gets the glass down. She makes the straw, takes a sip, put it, puts it back, and she falls asleep because she needs a little rest. She's not. Well, by be then able the shock, the, uh, her adrenaline's probably worn out yeah. from the shock, and so you would, you would pass out. Now, do we think she did everything she could to escape? Well, at this point, it's like, well, what else would you do? But I, I would have tried harder to get my cell phone. She didn't try very hard to get the cell phone. I that was know. Right there. She reached for it like once. I right. think I would have been really focused on that because yeah. like her foot almost reached it. Right. And she didn't use her other foot at all. I'm like, why wouldn't she use both feet and like sandwich it in there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, will knock down that headrest and use it to swipe at yeah. the phone. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, maybe just try like 
try to stand up on the bed. Yeah, she didn't try to stand up on the bed either. I don't know what would have happened, but maybe. Hey, something. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of things I would have tried that probably wouldn't have helped, but I would have just tried them. Right. I think I would have been trying to wiener my hand out of the handcuffs a little more too which probably wouldn't have worked i just think that's probably what i would have done right well yeah. and i think that's a logical thing or it, taking and banging it up against the top thing to try to chip away at the wood so i could slide <gasps> off the other edge of i the kept head. wondering if she could have like kicked that banister yeah. thing yeah. and broke it maybe like because yeah, I, I think she could have gotten her leg up there it didn't so... look that stable like it was shaking every time she moved <laughs> her hands yeah i don't know oh well that's not what she did no, because she if that had happened, th then this wouldn't be a book, Max. It's a movie. A mo it wouldn't <laughs> have been a book or a movie, Max. All right. It would have been the shortest movie ever in the history of movies. So she goes to bed and she dreams about her old dad? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, go. You take it then. I don't know what happens. Well, she's... I don't think she dreams about anything. She wakes up during the middle of the night... And she hears a noise. Oh, yeah. And she sees, like, a man standing, standing in the Standing in the shadows. corner. And she goes, help. I need help. And it comes towards her. And it it's looks not... so fucking creepy. It, it was really creepy. It's, like, not really a man. Yeah, that was the dude from um, The Giant from Twin Peaks, which I don't think you guys watch. No, we don't. He was don't. also yeah. um, in the Adams Family movies. He played Larch. Oh, nice. <laughs> but anyway, they've got him dressed up. So you're like, okay, is this a human or is it a demon is it a hallucination what is it and she's convinced herself that it's just a hallucination but of course her dead husband says is it a hallucination or is it death coming to get you that was kind of hokey but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i mean think about it if you're by yourself locked up in the dark well, i mean your brain has but gone by the wayside you probably and would think that and that's what he's saying to her, too. He's like, oh, you know, usually spooky things aren't real, but what about when you're all alone and it's right. nighttime and you're about to die? Maybe they're real then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And also he points out that there's a giant man's footprint in the blood now. Right. Mm -hmm. But she convinces herself that it's not real. She closes her eyes and just says, you're not real. You're not real. You're not real. And then she goes back to sleep. And then she dreams about childhood, does she? Yeah. Are we there now? I think she has the eclipse dream. Yes, I think so too. Because her father, I mean, Gerald start call, starts calling her Mouse, which is, of course, what her father called her. Right. I mean, we don't really have to get into too much detail in this scene. Basically, he, he molests all. Yeah, I don't... During an eclipse. During an eclipse. When the family's gone. The rest at of the at some beach gone. house. He said her on his lap and jerks off basically yeah. <laughs> that's what happens during the eclipse some of the eclipse visuals were really cool yes the way they did the eclipse was nice yes yeah sounds like you had a butt to that the way they did the eclipse was nice <laughs> but but well, sexual just, just, yeah, just, just kind of disgusting not so good. <laughs> i approve of the eclipse but not, not the rest. yeah not the actual scene itself <laughs> <laughs> um and then um there's a little flashback later on well he's oh, talking to her in the bedroom right well because her strong self comes back and says it's not what he did to you at the eclipse it's what he did to you afterwards in the bedroom right and that was so manipulative the way yes. he was talking to her it was really like that's what manipulative people are like it was gross yeah it was painful this is just to listen to him talk and the way right we don't have to tell anybody because if you tell anybody that you know she might not you know accuse you of doing something well, yeah he was he was uh, he was saying right. we should tell somebody right we should tell and, somebody because yeah but you know your mom probably won't you know blame she you might. and it's like okay well there's nothing to blame her she didn't do anything wrong but she's only 12 so therefore Maybe. And her and her mom already have the tension between them. Right. And like, you know, I know things are tense and this is just going to upset your mom more, but we really have to tell her. Right. Don't you think? <laughs> but she probably won't blame you for this. Now, is that supposed to be the only incident with the dad? Yes. Yeah. I wasn't sure if they implied it happened again. No, even in the book, they did. It was the only incident. But in the book, I remember it. they set it up so that she felt like she was a you know, she was flirting with her father almost because that's what 12 year olds do. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. then, so therefore she thought she was to blame. Mm. She wore that dress intentionally. Oh, I see. And it was knowing it was too short. Oh. So now 
Is there anything about him messing with the siblings at all? No. Because I, I kind of got so. that vibe almost with the movie. Yeah, and I don't think there was in the book. All right. But it was the fact that he had manipulated her so badly right. afterwards. That's... Right. And then, of course, she goes on to become husband and wife with an old old man right. resembling old dad. Who's Same, exactly a lawyer. Who's manipulative. Who's a manipulative and, yeah. asshole. Everything I've done, I've done for you, you know. So, yeah. Both of their names so. were Gerald. No, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, it was Henry Thomas. <laughs> Good Lord. No, it was Tom Mahout. What? Mahout. No. Uh, I'm how, like, what? How do you say that? Mahout? Mahout, I guess. Okay. I don't know. Henry Thomas is the guy that was stupid the actor. ass names. <laughs> He always has like very unusual last names, right? Full <laughs> game in his last okay, name. Okay, Max, we get it. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so what happens now? I don't know. Oh, doesn't she? Uh, she lays down in bed, like in the flashback, after right. he leaves the bedroom, and she looks down, and that crazy fucking guy, the demon guy. is like licking her toes. Right. Oh, yeah. And then she wakes up, and the dog is licking her foot. And she kicks the dog, and the dog bites her leg and runs right. off. But that was pretty great. That was creepy as hell. Right. Yes, yeah. I can't even begin to describe this thing's face. No, it was like, it's I don't wrong. know. Yeah, it was just, it wasn't right looking and the eyes were sparkly. There were a couple of times the eyes looked really cheesy though. Like for the most part, I found him very creepy. Right. But there were a couple of times his eyes were just like red lights. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was supposed to like symbolize the eclipse. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I might be reading into to it too much. Maybe they just ran out of things and they just had yeah. Christmas lights. <laughs> I don't know. They're like, oh, just use these really damn Christmas funny. lights. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's, that's how his eyes really look. That's possible. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. Anyway, so she falls asleep again. This sounds like a book that I would write because she sleeps a lot, which is yeah. what my characters do a lot because it's what I do a lot. <laughs> I I was on build with all the sleeping. Yeah. What the hell happens next? I'm trying to... I am. She has so another forgetful. flashback. And so many the, flashbacks. Well, I, well, the whole entire thing is a flashback, basically. What's the I mean, last what flashback, then? The one where the strong Jesse tells her your young self has the answer, and they go to oh, sitting yeah, at yeah, the yeah, dinner yeah. table. Did we skip a little anything? I don't think so. Um, I'm looking at the wiki right now. Am Me I allowed too. to say that? Was, and um, yeah. yeah, just Gerald was making fun of her again and showed her the footprint. Okay, yeah. And so that we get a flashback to when the, it's, that, it's the same night that he molested her. Right. Everyone's eating dinner at the table. And um, the dad is rubbing the mom's pregnant belly and Jesse is watching and she she uh, squeezes the glass in her hand and it, Shadows and stabs will palm open. Which is all bloody and right. I've done that, have you? I can't say that I ever have. No, I haven't. That, that happens to me so often. Does it? I'm always squeezing glasses so hard they smell. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's actually happened to me once or twice, Zach. That's crazy. Not, um, but I've done it a couple times while washing the dishes. Okay. I have broken a glass while washing the dishes, yeah. so I will say that. I've never bled from it, I don't think, but yeah, I've definitely broken glasses while washing the dishes. That's I why I tend to use plastic cups. I don't break anything. That's bullshit. Max is the master of the dishes, I hear. He they loves them. They call me uh, unbreakable. <laughs> 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 you a bore. Who calls you this? <laughs> I do. <laughs> so, back to the present day, the present time. Right. And the she's, present. She's having a argument with her two selves the, mm, well, in she, the room. That's when she gets the glass down. I know, and one of the female version of her says it's gonna hurt like hell you know the other her ex is telling her ex is not really her ex no, yet he is. he is now i guess Can't says be you, know, you better make sure you think this all the way through you dumbass because if you fuck it up you're just gonna bleed right well i mean she's gonna die anyway so at this point what difference does it make mm-hmm. 
So she squeezes the glass and smashes it against the thing, and it cuts her hand. And, and here comes the grossest part that I had to turn when my face. And we all stopped watching, so who knows what <laughs> oh happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> she sticks was... the piece of glass into the edge and just cuts the shit out of her wrist. Like, to the point where, like, it was fucked. I remember that was, when I was young, um, like, when I was a teenager, for some reason, wrists really freaked me out. Like, my wrists always felt very tender, and I could see the veins, and it scared me. And, like, wrist injury was one of my biggest fears as a teenager. So, reading this book, like, it fucked me up. (laughs) Is that what happened in the book, too? Yeah. um, I don't don't remember. I don't know if the whole degloving injury happens, but yeah, she definitely slits her wrist and uses the blood as lubricant. And it was very detailed. It was so graphic in this movie. Like, oh, the whole hand basically then, yeah, comes off. Yeah, as she's sliding her hands out, I, I couldn't watch. I had to turn my head and close I, my like, eyes. I, I kept glancing back, but yeah, it was difficult. And that doesn't happen to me a lot with yeah. horror movies. I can usually watch stuff with that. Like, like she basically degloved her whole hand, like right. pe- peeled the skin right off. Before watching this, everyone on social media is like, oh, those one scene don't eat while you watch it and i thought maybe they will talk about when the dog is chowing down on the dead body. oh no <laughs> and no. then that happens and i'm like this is what we're not supposed to eat <laughs> <laughs> and there you guys were with a full plate of lasagna in front of you how'd you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh but Ugh. she breaks. But yeah. <laughs> she breaks free with the one handcuff, and then she gets the phone. It's dead. Obviously, obviously. it's been what a day and a half at this point. Yeah, and he the phone hadn't been charged. Uh, before we before we continue, the, she takes that glass. Before she breaks it, she dumps it out. Why didn't she drink the rest of it? I don't know. She, I know that was so well, dumb. That killed me. Like why? Yeah, no, that was ridiculous. It was wasteful. <laughs> and then afterwards, she's dying for a drink. Like, she's chugging right. it out of the tap in the sink. Like, uh, maybe you could have uh, fished your water. I don't know. Maybe she doesn't like stale water and it had been sitting out all night. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> she was planning on using it for the alien. <laughs> um, but yeah, she she breaks free. Um, she gets the key from the sink and uses puts it in her mouth to unhook the remaining handcuff. And, like, I'm... wrap your hand up somehow. With tampons? With, yeah, maxi yeah. pads. Yeah. I know, I'm like, there's a towel right there, just use that. <laughs> she leaves all these clean towels and just leaves the bathroom. I think the maxi pad was actually a good idea. I mean, it's a good I idea, mean... but then I would have wrapped that in a towel. I don't know, just oh, yeah. my five cents, it, but, you know. But yeah, I, know? I think, like, putting that over the wound itself more so than a towel made sense. Because yeah. they're going to well, absorb they're, more, they're and they're, they're definitely sterile. True. They are. Yeah, I'm, I've used that in the book once. You did? Yeah. A guy got well, shot and bandages it up with a tampon. It would work. It's a a tampon or a maxi pad? I don't know. He doesn't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> in the book, you knew the difference. I don't know. I probably... He asked me at the time, and it was correct. So, yeah. Uh, anyway. I did my research, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> So she's running through the hall to get out of the house. (laughs) She runs into the Moonlight Man, as the demon person is called. Yeah, he has his um, box of trinkets. Right, and so Um, she pulls off. What is in this box? There's bones bones and and jewelry. And so she takes off of her wedding ring and hands it to him and And then leaves the house. Yeah. I, what did she think she was bargaining for her life or something at that point no. here you can have my wedding ring and you so, to live i noticed at least three references to stephen king books in this yes at yeah. one point they said the thing that he had was a bag of bones right they called the they dog called- cujo and drilled says all things still the beam which is a dark tower reference yes anything else i missed any other easter eggs that was, that's the only ones I saw. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. I'm sure there was probably more, but those are the like three obvious ones. There's normally more. Okay. I don't know. So she gets into the car, starts the car, starts driving. Of course, she's passing out from lack of blood. And then she has another vision. It has something to do with the eclipse. Yeah, and that was, I think that's where the eclipse looked really cool. Like, it was yeah. very red and strange. It, that was really neat. I liked that. Exactly. And then and she the, crashes. Well, she sees the moonlight man in the back seat. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then. What does he want at this point? I mean, she's giving him the fucking ring. 
He wants her. She he wants the bones, man. The bone man. The bones man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am Bones Man. And then so she crashes into a tree. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. It was not that. The end of the movie. <laughs> it should have been. And then the people who ever live in that house right there where she crashed in front of Finder and is like, God damn it, not again. Not another crash, Jesus. Every goddamn week someone crashes in front of our house. <laughs> we gotta put some lights in. <laughs> But then, yeah, we cut the black, and we come back, and we get this dumb ending. I don't know. It was just like a very exposition ending. Like, here's what's happened with the rest of my life. (laughs) Everything's wrapped up within five to ten minutes. Right. Super fast. So She's like, oh, yeah. Should we just read the Wikipedia from this? (laughs) So it's six months Pat have passed. Jesse is alive. Her right hand's, like, has skin gaffs on it. Yeah, it's had to have three screen, skin grafts to she put the finger. She has a fing- cool glo- um, fingerless glove on it yeah. now. Well, maybe it's just black with infection. I don't know. No, it was a glove to hold her hand together. She pretended to have amnesia about the whole thing, which I don't really get why. Right. Yeah, what was the amnesia about? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, all she had to do was say he had a heart attack. I mean... <laughs> And then I was, you know, I guess she didn't want people to know that she had kinky sex. I, I don't know. But they obviously found out anyway. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, was, and then confusing. she started a foundation and, like, was doing all sorts of good stuff. But she was still spooked out by the Moonlight Man. Right, who appeared to her as she fell asleep every night. But like, what is he What is he saying? I don't know. I don't think he ever said anything is to he her. he just coming, like, to hang out? Like, hey. Remember yeah. that crazy Remember thing that, that night we had? <laughs> <laughs> so how was your day? Well, then uh, it's revealed that there was actually a man who had been stealing from graves, which was what we had heard about at the beginning the of the, at the very beginning of this movie. Yeah. Who um, had been digging up crypts and stealing from the dead, and then he would eat them and take body parts. And This man's name was uh, Raymond Andrew. Jobert. He was a was French well man. Back. He was suffering from something called, I don't know how to say Acromegaly, that. which causes like the forehead to be too big and your hands to be too large, which is why he was deformed looking. Yeah, that's probably what the real Axel has. Too. It is, yeah. yeah. And that is a disease. Normally they can stop it, though. Oh, can they? I didn't know I that. I think so. I think they can figure out, I think they figured out when the pituitary gland to stop it. Oh. Anyway, so... She, they've been, he's been caught, so she goes to him at court. Right, yeah. Which is weird because she just walks into this courtroom. She's stressing, <laughs> stressing. And, yeah. the whole proceeding. and I'm thinking, you know, first off, a case like that, the courtroom would have been sealed. Nobody would have been able to get in. Well, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, so she's still hallucinating. She's still <laughs> cuffed up. Yeah, I wondered about that. Well, I've been thinking that the whole time because before she broke the glass, um, the husband was like, now visualize what's going to happen before you do it. Right. Yeah. And she I never did, did do that. I her to do that, yeah. So she walks up to this moon man, whatever. And <laughs> moon man. Moon man. <laughs> <laughs> we should plug uh, John Oliver Hodges' book, Whistleboon, <laughs> which is about a moon man. And he, she, she goes, hey, hey, you. And he turns around. Hey. And, and he hasn't said anything since being arrested, according to the courts and the reporters and okay. stuff. He hasn't even talked to his lawyer. He hasn't said uh-huh. anything to the police. But the, he looks at her and he says, you're not real. You're only made of moonlight. And he immediately breaks the cuffs with right. his giant hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That, like, and I'm still thinking, okay, this is still a hallucination. But no. No. But then she sees in him, like, the faces of her father and of her ex, her dead husband. Yeah, like, all, like the face switches all the right. men who have been assholes. Right, and she goes, you're so much smaller than I remember, and walks out. Which is a dumb line. Because <laughs> he's pretty like, big. Ruts off, and yeah. nobody, like... And nobody stops her. her. Says anything like, hey, you can't just run into a courtroom and yell right. at him. Hey. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, like, man, she comes in every trial and does that. She's, <laughs> she's nuts. <laughs> so yeah. Like, yeah that all felt a little i mean like i kind of like the idea of like oh the moonlight man was the only real thing and that makes it even scarier like that's yeah. a cool yeah. concept but it could have been folded in a lot more elegantly agreed yeah yeah and it was like we got to finish this movie let's just have her do this i mean how did the book end yeah i don't remember the book ended the same yeah oh well I that was Stephen like, King's ass. It was like, oh shit, it's time for dinner. I gotta finish this book. <laughs> I almost wish.
wish it had to like end it with like her in the hospital, like starting to recover and getting a little better and watching the news and seeing him being arrested. Like it would have still given us the idea that yeah. of what happened there, but I guess it wouldn't have had the same kind of closure for like, the character. Well, the character oh. receives closure because she's like, okay, I'm done with these assholes in my life now. Like, it's time for me to shine. What if he, she's driving away and she hits somebody and it's the moon man and she wakes up in the hospital and he's in a bed next to her, also fucked up. Ooh. Ooh. I don't think they put people <laughs> in the same room anymore. Okay. Especially the person who hit the other person. Yeah. <laughs> that might be kind of <laughs> might be kind of bad. Little signs, victim, <laughs> assailant. <laughs> yeah, well. All in all, it was a decent movie. And it was I mean great. the way they did the her inner thoughts was perfect. I mean, it yeah, really I mean, was. I mean, it was it was pretty much perfect until the last couple of minutes. Yeah. And even then that wasn't so bad. It was just handled strangely. Yeah. yeah, like the concept of it was fine. All yeah. the things right. were fine, but they just, it didn't sit all that well in the movie. But right. from what I remember, it was a really faithful adaption. Mm. Like, yeah. I think we mentioned a couple things that were slightly different, but mostly, like, they didn't make a lot of changes. No. Was, on, was the last name also? It prob- I'm sure it was, because in the book. I don't remember, but it must have been. Has to have been. There's no way he. Why would he change it? That. Yeah, that'd be a stupid change. <laughs> you know what needs to be different? What if we had game in the guy's last name? <laughs> really, like hammered home that he was playing a game. It's not even really a game. No, like, it wasn't a game. He it was just he just wanted to handcuff her. It's not. There's no game to that. Yeah. Well, it should have been like Jill's kinky sets time. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we all recommend it. Yeah, definitely go find it. Go find it. Yeah, no, it's, on, yeah. it's on Netflix. Go find. I wasn't Gerald's doing game. it, joke. But now <laughs> Jesus I am. Christ! <laughs> it's on Netflix. Only on Netflix. So go to Netflix. There you go. I hope Netflix um, sponsors this that show would be soon. Nice. That would be great. Yes. Any final thoughts, Betty? Um, no, just basically I thought it was a good adaption of a book that creeped me out a lot when I was a kid. Or however old I was, I don't know. Um, I guess I would advise people not to use real handcuffs for their kinky sex games. They should should always have ones with a safety release. Always. And probably a safety word also. A, you should always have a safety word. Yeah, um, tell... The other person you're gonna handcuff them beforehand. Yeah, have the keys closer just in case something happens. <laughs> Don't just bring out have... handcuffs. <laughs> if you have a violent rape fantasy, it might be good to prepare your significant other to yes. participate in that. By the way, <laughs> just bring it on them. <laughs> Write up an outline, maybe. <laughs> an outline <laughs> rehearse ahead of time. Yeah, I don't think rehearsing would help. <laughs> Right. Um, don't leave the door open because A, that's how you get bugs, and B, a dog will eat you. There you yeah. go. And also, um, dis- man. a disfigured man with a box of bones will walk in and just look at you and then leave. I like that he just looked at her. What yeah. was his huh. mindset going? Like, he thought she was she was imaginary. So, did he just break into this house and see this woman handcuffed, pleading for help? He's like, oh, this isn't real. And he huh, left. This is, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Friend. I was kind of thinking that, like, maybe he was waiting for her to die because he had a thing about dead bodies. And he was like, oh, yeah. hey, she's going to be a dead body pretty soon. I'm just going to chill. And then I'm going to take stuff off her, like her bones and jewelry. Yeah, probably. It's kind of a dick move, not calling for help. Well, I mean, he I was, don't know. I get he was it. kind of I like mean... a weird person, so I don't think he thought that way. Did oh. you think he was weird? Well, I mean, not like weird, like weird, <laughs> weird, but you know what I mean. I don't discriminate yeah. against uh, grave robbers. I mean, they all have people have to make a living. Doesn't mean you shouldn't call the cops when you see someone's in danger. In grave danger. <laughs> har, 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 har. Oh my god! And on that note, we will end the show. <laughs> Thanks, Betty. Yeah, thanks. And next for some news, but first a song called Tonight, A Lonely Century by the new mystical troubadours on the album Jungle Love Revisited, which can be found at the new mystical troubadours.bandcamp.com.
That was the new Mystical Troubadour singing Tonight, A Lonely Century. From the little album Jungle, Jungle Love, Love Revisited. Revisited. All right, so moving on to some news. What's going on, newsies? We can now announce the table of contents of Dark Moon Digest number 29. It'll include stories Jessica Mallerman by Josh Mallerman, <laughs> Eden in the Inn by Ashley Shurman, Our Feral Skies by Betty Rocksteady, we Feed This Muddy Creek by Sam Richard, and It's East by Jeff Bowles. We will also have columns by George and by George Lee, and Jay Wilburn will also have an interview with Josh Mallerman. Yes. So be it's out soon. soonish. <laughs> Just finalizing a couple of things, trying right. to get these interview questions answered by Josh. He's busy at New York Comic Con this weekend. Right. He was. He was. no longer yeah. the weekend. So it's just... Keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. Um, subscribe to our newsletter. We will announce it when it's available. Go to www.pmmpnews.com. Or you could subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash pmmpublishing, and you can actually get the e-version of the magazine for free. Not, Not for, for free. free for a, s- buck a, for a dollar For sponsoring us for a dollar a month. Yeah. So, um, we also have pre-orders available for Night Roads by John C. Foster and Speculations by Joe McKinney. If you pre-order Joe McKinney's Speculations, it will be signed. Exactly. So, don't wait. Get to it. This weekend, we will be seen at Cibolo Fest. What date is that? Saturday, October the 14th, Uh. um, here in Cibolo, Texas. (laughs) So, if you live anywhere near the Cibolo area, come and visit us. Um, Andrew Hilbert will be joining us. And then on, so then on Sunday, we'll be at the Monster Bash at the Black Swan Inn in San Antonio. So you might want to come find us there instead. Yeah. Or come see us both days. Well, don't see us at all. Well, that would be sad. It's up to you. <laughs> all right. Well, that's about it for PMMP news. On to Stephen King news. Very exciting. There's uh, not a lot to talk about from my research. Only one thing new since the last episode of the podcast. Considering he's had like an explosion of news lately, it's kind of not surprising (laughs) that it's kind of tapered off a little. (laughs) But one of the main reasons we began this podcast was over the excitement of Hulu's Castle Rock TV show. I know. And now... We finally have the full teasel trailer thing. Very exciting. And it tells us a lot about what this show is about. That was sarcasm. It tells us nothing. It tells us nothing. We get a montage. Which is kind of cool. I mean, it means they're obviously in the process of already filming it, which means it is more of a reality than it was even. It's a reality TV show. I don't. (laughs) About a fictional town, sure. (laughs) Um, I mean, let's just walk through what we see. Okay. I mean, it's produced by Bad Robot. We right. see oval headshots of a street, a man on a medical table. I think he was putting put to death. Oh, put to death. Yeah. We see a man in a parking lot looking around. We see blood going down a steel case. Correct. We Missing see a, a child poster. 
piano keys going off, a fallen piano, a videotape and flames, a man with a hockey mask, it looked like. A funeral. The guy from It. Sitting in a jail cell, we see Sissy Spacek with an umbrella, we see a kid waving at a mascot, a woman jumping off a bridge, a kid adjusting a light, a dog eating a skull, an old man standing at a podium, someone spray painting something, a dog. Stuff going so fast, we can't say <laughs> an alli- it. <laughs> an alligator, a Shawshank prison vehicle floating into a lake. I mean, what the fuck is going on? I don't know, but it's exciting because it's like all of the universe is coming together, you know? What could it possibly be about? I don't know. Are we going to get an anthology show? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be an anthology show or more like how he wrote like needful things where it's like, okay, here's this person's take of this event. Here's this person's take, you know? Right. Kind of thing. So it looks very exciting. Yeah, I think that's it. Yes. As far as I know. All right. Well, let's do the thing. We talk about URLs. Okay. If you want to contact us, <laughs> our URL is www.castlerockcast.com. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash castlerockradio. Our Twitter handle is castlerockcast. Our email, which we would love to hear from you on, is castlerockcast at gmail.com. And, of course, our Patreon to help us keep this going is patreon.com slash pmmpublishing. Uh, and as always, please review and rate us on iTunes and subscribe. Exactly. Uh, that's it for this week. Next week, maybe it's going to be it. <laughs> we keep promising. <laughs> One day we'll get to it. <laughs> it's a long book, you guys. <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens. I am Max Booth. And I'm Laura Michelle. Have a good week. Goodbye. Have a scary day!